Good evening and welcome to our midweek faith lift. My name is Shannon Lebrun and I am joined here by Doug Worth again. Yeah. Yes, here we are. Doug, I missed you. You weren't here last week. That's true. Yeah. Which but Landis name? was here. Landis was here. And it we, was a great it was a great interview. Did you did you watch? I did. What did you think of the podcast with Landis? I, I thought it was great. You know, um, Landis and I go way back. Mm -hmm. You know, we've known each other for a long period of time. And uh but it's mostly about music, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. And this was a this was an opportunity to to see who Landis is, yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. and it was wonderful, yeah. Um, what, what was interesting to me is that he mentioned you quite often in his pod in his podcast. He that did. We did. He mentioned you, and Landis was introduced to New Thought. Pretty much, you were his teacher. You were his pretty much. spiritual teacher. I mean, you were his minister when he That's got introduced right. to it, and so he made a lot of reference to some of the things that he learned from you. And yeah, he while did. he was in this podcast, he dropped some nuggets, some really powerful nuggets. And, um, and I, I, I give those nuggets, I give those, that credit to you because you've, well, you taught him. Well, I, I will say one thing about, about Landis. The, 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 and I've mentioned this to you privately before, <laughs> but to our audience, the first time that, that Landis came to Unity of Chattanooga, um, I, I noticed, you know, I noticed new comers, you know, people who were there for the mm -hmm. first time. And I came up to him afterwards, and I just wanted to get to know him a, mm -hmm. a, a little bit and, and talk. And Landis has a, uh, you know, he, he grew up in a, a Baptist yeah. background, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, a black church, which yeah. was, you know, got a lot of music yeah. and everything. Yeah. And you could, you could tell, you could tell from his, from his music mm -hmm. that he was feeling it. You know, th mm. there was just something about him. Every now and then when, when I'd get up to do a meditation, for example, and he would come underneath it with music, mm -hmm. I, I would just open up. So right, right. there was something there. <laughs> so, so anyways, I, I looked at Landis, and I think, the, I think one of these first time, he was actually the musician, mm -hmm. I, I think. I, I don't quite remember, but I remember he looked at me, and his eyes got just real big around, and he said, I never knew... You could feel good after a church service, wow. Wow. you know, wow. 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 and and he started laughing and I started right. laughing right. and and but that's what it's it, about. You, but you know, it wasn't. All, I mean, people left church back in the day feeling guilty. Oh yeah, that's you what know? it was about: guilt and shame yeah. and control yeah. mechanisms yeah. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And yeah. Yeah. gosh, yeah. And trust me, that's still around. 
Okay. But we don't leave we church. don't do that. We don't leave church feeling that way. I mean, what what I notice about us at Unity of Chattanooga right. is that you know we when we finish church, we have our little get together, and most of us don't want to leave. We have to be forced out the door. I you know. know what I mean? And I think that's great. Which is another thing too. I, I think I mentioned to you and we need to get more time at that place. Exactly, yeah, we need to rent more space, yeah. more time. I mean, we're just we're just overflowing, and I'm so grateful for that. And a lot of that is because of what the board is doing. A lot of that is because of the messages that you're delivering. It's you know? it's, it's a group thing. Yeah. you know, it's a team. Yeah. So and, yeah, and as a matter of fact, um, you know, the involvement of the people on the board and others. Yeah. There are other people stepping up. Yeah. Now, yeah. Is incredible. It is. It really is. And I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. I'm so grateful for all of them. Yeah. You've been, you've been over the last couple, couple of weeks, you've been talking a different message and it's, it's, it's a message about, about the mind body connection. That's correct. And that's a, that's a message that, um, you don't very, you don't hear very much at unity churches, you know, you hear it, but it, it's related to like, you know, um, on a on a, le- a lower level, like on a level of you know, like what's showing up in your life as far as things right. or or situations, like a problem that you're having in a relationship. That's right. probably because of what you're thinking. Um, but you've you've been talking about this as far as as far as medically. Yes. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Like you know, your thinking is ar- around what's showing up in you, in you biologically. Well, uh, basically, what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, we, 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 talk, we talk a lot about, um, you know, thoughts or things, and we talk uh, about how our, our thoughts create our reality, and, and that's all well and good. But we have to remember that our bodies are divine vehicles. They have energy centers in them. So if, if you're in a particular situation and you have a gut feel, that's energy, and you need to understand how that operates. If you're in a in a, uh, a situation w- with other people, and oftentimes you feel a strong pull to one person or a strong uh, rejection, or not maybe you know uh, a neg. You need to understand how those energy centers work and what they're saying. And so the idea from the past two weeks and going into the next few weeks is how are we connected as spiritual beings in a physical body? And so for the past couple of weeks, we we introduced this by talking about the chakra system, the seven major energy centers, the 22 minor energy centers uh, that we have. And if you talk with doctors, they might glass over about this a little bit. But it's very, very important to understand that we are not just a meat suit, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. We are in a, a divine energy mm-hmm. body mm-hmm. of which manifests physically, mm-hmm. okay? So how do those energy centers work? Mm-hmm. And how do we understand the energies that are coming in and going out? How do we understand when they're blocked, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Because when those energy centers are blocked, you, you get you get stuck energy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and stuck energy will continue to create dysfunctional mm-hmm, things mm-hmm, in your mm-hmm, life mm-hmm. and it will end up in disease. You know, one of the things that I remember... So we need to understand that. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, when you started talking about that last Sunday, I, not last Sunday, but Sunday before that, I started to remember like how like when I got in relationships and, you know, my homostasis was upset, upset because, you know, when you get in a new relationship, it kind of affects your baseline. You know, you have a normal baseline that you function in when you're a single person, but right. then when you get in a relationship... You gotta change some stuff. And it's like, it takes a while to get used to that stuff. Right. And I remember like, I would get a lot of acne. Oh. And, and I'm relating that to my, my body responding to this new situation that I'm going through and I had to get used to it. And I think that's kind of like what you're saying, that your body responds to what's happening in your life. What's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that, can be, that can be a guidance system in itself. Right. Okay, so when, when you're... Um, when you're going through your life and you're, you're doing your work and you've got relationships and all those kinds of things, there are feelings that are going on in your body. And you need to understand where those feelings are coming from, you know, what energy centers, and, and what is the guidance that those feelings are telling you. Because you got to remember, feelings come from thoughts. So what thoughts are being triggered? And the thoughts that are being triggered 
generate energy, they, they, they generate feelings, and those feelings are the, are the huge attracting force for circumstances, situations, and, and other people that match them. So you have to understand that. In the past two weeks, that's primarily what we've talked about is, is the mind-body connection mm-hmm. and how we are spiritual beings mm-hmm. in a spiritual body mm-hmm. that manifests physically. Mm-hmm. And how does all that work? Mm-hmm. That's, that's what we've been talking about. And to a large part, that can be part of your guidance system mm-hmm. as, as you go through this Walt Life experience. Mm-hmm. Now, coming up, uh, I, I think I've talked about that enough, and I've mm-hmm. showed people books, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. Uh, enough. So now what we're going to do mm-hmm. uh, in, the, in the coming weeks mm-hmm. is we're going to talk about our guidance system from, let's just say, help from unseen hands. Mm-hmm. How does that work? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about that. And that's going to be Sunday coming out. Yeah, that's going to be this coming Sunday and maybe a couple Sundays after that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I thought initially when we started talking about the mind-body connection, it would be just you know, it would be just one Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, it turned out to be two. Yeah, I and mean, what kind of response were you, did you get from people at the church? Or you know? Well, uh, I mean, I got a guy who who's, um, lives in Memphis. I met him probably about two months ago at the Celebrating Our Soul Conference. Yeah. And um, he's dealing with some, some illnesses. Right. Um, and um, he's watched a couple of your sermons. He's watched our podcast. And he's amazed at some of the stuff that you're talking about. And he started to try to apply some of these, these principles that Charles and Myrtle have, have talked about for years right, right. in the 1800s. Right. That most of us don't really talk about anymore. You know, 12 well, hours, how to... How to... And, the, and the meditation last Sunday was, was to show people how to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't, I don't know if, if that carried over uh, into um, the internet presentation, the Facebook. I'm sure it did. But, yeah. the, but the whole idea of that meditation was... Yeah, that meditation did carry over into it, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we talked about it. You know, here's how it works. Here's how you do it, which is all well and good. But most people say, well, that's nice to know. And then they go off. Mm-hmm. And, so I wanted to give them a demonstration. Mm-hmm. We actually did that demonstration mm-hmm. of, of, mm-hmm. about how that... And, and, and I'm asking you what response you got, because I know online, just with the couple people that I've spoken to, they, they really see an improvement already. This guy, he, I mean, he wants to talk with you. He's like, hey, yeah. can you give him my number? Well, one thing I can tell you, <laughs> a, 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 lot of, a lot of people came up afterwards, mm-hmm. and, uh, and they wanted to talk, and there was a number of people who said, wow, dude, that was really deep, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. I hate to say it, it wasn't deep for me. Right, right. Okay? Yeah. But it was, something, it was new information, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And so the whole idea of, of what I do on Sunday and what I want to do is, in the talk, here's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's some of the principles involved, mm-hmm. and then more so in the meditations, let's do the work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and and give people an idea. This is how you do it. I, I'm gonna go a little personal real quick. Cause you say it's not, it's not deep for me. So, are you saying what are you saying when you say that? Like, are you saying that you do this stuff all the time personally? Um, well. Let, <laughs> Yes and no. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. I've been in it for a while. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, I went to ministerial school twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. But as I was mentioning, as I was mentioning to Shannon before this podcast, um, I've been doing this since I've been four years old. Mm-hmm. I mean, four years old, I'm sitting in my parents' uh-huh. closet asking questions and getting answers. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's been a long search too, mm-hmm. because throughout. You know, childhood and teenage years and twenties and mm-hmm. things like that. If you try to talk with somebody about this, they think you're you're nuts. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you if you start talking about uh, your guidance or or a, a voice uh, inside, they're going to think you're schizo. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, I will I will just share a story. Mm-hmm. Uh, years ago. As, as part of the uh, application, as part of the application to go into ministerial school, um, you, you would have an interview, and, and some of those interviews, one of which was with a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And that psychiatrist would, would ask you various questions, and then based on his um, understanding of who you were or his analysis he would give a recommendation to the board as to whether to bring a person in or not and what they were looking for was uh, a person who was well balanced okay or a person who had issues or something like that and over and over and over again at least initially with this one uh, psychologist 
uh, prospective uh, students, uh, prospective ministers would come in and they would talk about their guidance. And they would talk about what we call the voice that is not a voice, inner thoughts, uh, uh, guidance of some sort. Mm -hmm. And after, after the, the first and second one, mm -hmm. he'd write down, you know, schizoid or, or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, this person's hearing voices, mm -hmm. definitely not. And after about the third or fourth interview, uh, when people mentioned this, he said, wait a minute. And he went back and he talked to the Unity people and said, I am hearing this over and over and over again, which does not connect at all with my background. What's going on? And so the Unity people got with him and, and talked about this inner guidance. They started talking about uh, the natural guidance that we have. And we're going to talk about this on Sunday a little bit. And his eyes opened quite a bit and said, this is something that I, I had never experienced before. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all brand new. So anyways, what we're trying to do on Sunday, it, it, the mind-body connection, uh, the idea is, is how do we get in touch with the divine nature and the energy systems and the natural guidance and feelings uh, that we have in our body. And we can get that guidance from our physical body, uh, from the feelings we have, from the thoughts that we entertain. And some of those thoughts are not necessarily our own. Mm -hmm. Where do they come from? Mm -hmm. How do we tune those in? Mm -hmm. So anyways, we're going to talk about that on Sunday. And the whole, the whole, uh, I'd say, past two talks and the next maybe two or three talks are all going to be about how do we know who we are, where we're going, what resources do we have? Mm -hmm. How do we connect spiritually? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, 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 I moved here six years ago, and I heard something. And I'm not schizophrenic, and I'm not bipolar, or I'm not, you know, right. any of those other diagnoses. And, and, and that's what you're talking about. It's something inside of you, and, it, and you're, you're saying that you want to teach us how to, to nurture. I don't know if you use the word nurture it, but to allow it to come forth. Right. And, and know when it's talking to you and right. know when it's present right. and recognize it. Because sometimes and, it's the crazy voice too. Sometimes well, <laughs> you're, you're, you're absolutely right. You gotta know what, you know, what who, channel are you tuned right. into who's, here? Who's talking to you right now? You know, if, <laughs> if you're watching horror movies and then getting... Mm -hmm. That's probably not. You right. know, you, you know yeah. so how, how do you tune into that? Yeah. And, and we'll talk about this a little bit uh, more on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But you, you got to be very careful with that. Yeah, yeah. Now, there are people out there, and I'll mention uh, one of them on Sunday, but uh, there are people out there who uh, are very, very connected. They're, they're very what you might call clairvoyant, but we're all clairvoyant to a certain degree. Um, and, and they talk with their, with their guides. They, they know how to, what's going on in their energy systems, uh, their biology. And, and they walk a beautiful life. So the idea is, how do we do that? By the same token, how do we stay off those channels and out of that energy that's going to lead us astray? And that's out there too. I, I, I get it. I, I really get it. I mean, it's just when I thought about that whole acne thing, you know, being, being aware of what's happening in your, in your body being aware right. of what's going on in yourself. Like, okay, this is telling you something, Shannon. These, this acne is telling you something. What is right. it telling you? Right. Um, knowing that, you know what, I keep getting this voice that I need to, I keep hearing this, this message that I need to move, or I need to start looking at, you know, um, having my grandkids come, or I need to start moving this furniture in a different location. You know, right. these are things that continue to come up, pop up over and over again. And yeah. are you saying that's like, the, to some extent, a guidance? It can be. Right, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it can be. Mm -hmm. And the thing to realize is that it's always your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. you can get guidance. Mm -hmm. I mean, our moms and our dads and our coaches and our teachers mm -hmm. all had things for us. Mm -hmm. But it was up to us right. to say, yes, I'm going to do that or no, I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. And I've had situations in my life where... Uh, rightly or wrongly, you know, I felt pulled in a certain direction, and I said, "No, nah, I'm not going to go there." Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. so it, it's always it's Absolutely. always yeah. your yeah. choice, and and I would say the biggest choice that you have is how do you tune 
what you think about, what you feel about, and what you do as actions. How do you channel those in the right direction? Mm. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a direction that not only helps you, but helps everybody else. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's being all those three things being aligned. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then when the messages do come, you, you kind of know that they're coming from a divine place, right? Because you know you've you've done all the check marks in those three areas. You kind of know well, this is this is it's got to well, be so, divinely inspired. I mean, I'm I'm doing my 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 um my work. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what my experience is. Mm -hmm. um, a situation comes up. What you need to learn to do is to be in that pause mm -hmm. between stimulus and response. Mm -hmm. In other words, something's happening. Something you're thinking about something, whatever. And then pause for a moment mm -hmm. because in that, in that pause, you can hear this voice, you can hear this thought, you can hear this one, or you could hear this mm -hmm. one. And after a while, you're going, this is where the, the thought and the emotions come in. Because after a while, you can go to this thought and you say, okay, what does that feel like? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can go to this thought, what does that Check feel in like? With the body. You're checking in with your body because your feelings are never going to lie. Mm -hmm. Your feelings will always reflect the, the, the thought that's going on, mm -hmm. and your thoughts are either connected to guidance or they're not, mm -hmm. or they're kind of connected, mm -hmm. or they're kind of not. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is, in, in that pause, mm -hmm. take a look at that, at that spectrum mm -hmm. of, of thoughts that are occurring there, and then which ones... Which ones feel the best? Mm. And then go with that one. And after a while, and this is something I would, I would, uh, I would tell our, our listening audience here, that takes practice. You're not going to get it the very first time. But once you start going through life, listening to your feelings, which is what last Sunday's talk was all about, how do you listen to those feelings so that you know you're, you're going in the right direction? You know, and and that that takes a little bit, but after a while, after a while, it, it almost becomes second nature. And after a while, you can be somebody will be telling you this, somebody will be telling you that, and you can say no, 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 no. Right. This is the way I'm going, mm -hmm. and they'll look at you like, how'd you come up with that? Mm -hmm. And if you're in the right group, you can say, well, this is higher thought, or mm -hmm. this is where I think I'm going. <laughs> what do you mean if you're in the right group? Like if, cause if you, if well, you're, if you're so in the wrong so, group, so you, okay. somebody say, well, how'd you come up with that? Mm -hmm. You can just simply, well, I don't know, it's just a thought that, that occurred to me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that psychologist that was interviewing the, the Unity Ministers had to be trained on this whole guidance thing. Well, I mean, he, he, he had to, his, his training, it was, that was schizophrenia. Yeah, right. That's schizophrenia. That's right. But, so he had to be brought up to speed on what, what, the ministers are ex what they're talking about, which is not schizophrenia. Right. Um, and there's a whole. It's how how do you follow your guidance? You right. Know, right. You know, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And but he was it, he was diagnosed as you guys. You guys all had oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> this guy's nuts. Yeah. So is this one. So is this one. So yeah. he probably denied a few people way before he even started to realize. Well, this was this was the first time. Oh, okay. And okay. once he once he heard it two or three okay. times, okay. he went back and said, "Wait a minute." He asked some questions. What's this he didn't all just about? assume anything. He asked right. questions. And you know, this is what we teach. This is how it works. And 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 you as a psychologist or as a psychiatrist need to understand if you see somebody. You know, talking talking about thoughts in their head, and they've got all this other dysfunctional behavior. Yeah, that, that's that, schizophrenia. Yeah, that, that's. You know, we call that in social work. We call that cultural competence. Okay. Culturally competent. You have to understand the culture that you're dealing with before you can make a diagnosis. Like because in some cultures, you know, eye contact is normal, and in some cultures, you don't. Look that's at right. That person. So that's not not normal. You know, you might say this person is not is lying to me, but no, women in, in you know in the Asian countries they don't look at each other. Not women, but people in Asian countries just don't make that eye contact, and you because, know that in, well, in Asian countries. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's just one of the culture things right. you learned as far as culture. But you're you're talking about this whole spirituality thing. Like you don't right. you don't tell ministers about that they have schizophrenia because they have guidance. You know, right. or even people that's religious, you don't you don't say that to them. Well, and, and I was mentioning to you before this podcast, mm -hmm. um, years ago, um, I was in a group of ministers, mm -hmm. and these guys were, you know, come from all the big schools, mm -hmm. Harvard Divinity, you mm -hmm. know, Union Theological, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And um, 
I didn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they, they <laughs> thought I was a little, you know, on the nuts side because, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I would I would say, well, you know, here it is in the Bible. Here's here's how this works. It's it's a natural mm-hmm. uh, a guidance system that we all have. And they're thinking, <laughs> this guy's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and, and with this psychologist, I wouldn't say that he had to be trained. Mm-hmm. I would simply say that there need there was another door that needed to be opened. There was a there was another way of looking at this. And then once he was aware of that, Cultural then confidence. he could determine mm-hmm. whether somebody's on track or they're and I, and I can tell you that there are, I mean I there there are people who have voices in their head that is not good right at all of course all of you got to do is of course go down to the wrong side of town right. with the some of those right I understand you know you, yeah, yeah that's definitely true Doug you know we're out of time again but before again we, before <laughs> we end I want to I want to number one thank you for coming out okay Thank well, you for coming it. out, man, and, and joining me again on the podcast. I really appreciate it when you come and drop your science, drop your <laughs> your, your knowledge. You got a lot of good nuggets, and I, I really appreciate that. And and I want our viewers to remember that you know we can catch um, the podcast. You can catch the podcast every Wednesday at um, four p.m. on our Unity of Chattanooga uh, Facebook page, and also you can catch the podcast on our um, Friends of Unity of Chattanooga Facebook group. And those two different things. We have a Facebook group okay. and we have a Facebook page. And so our podcast and our Sunday services are broadcast on both of those um, um, media outlets um, every Wednesday and every Sunday. Also, we have a YouTube page, Unity of Chattanooga. You know about our YouTube page, Doug? No. Okay, well, we have a YouTube page. <laughs> Technically, I'm a little challenged <laughs> with all you this stuff. You know about the YouTube channel. Yeah. I mean, you. I know about YouTube. Yeah, but you know about Unity of Chattanooga's YouTube channel. I've sent you okay, a few times. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I have looked at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. You looked at it. Um, and also, we, we want to talk a little bit about. Um, so we have that. You can also catch our, our our broadcast there. And if this has been a blessing to you, you feel like you're 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 growing from these podcasts. You know, share it with a friend or a neighbor. Make them aware of what what we're doing. You know, and if you want to send a little donation, that'd be nice. That yeah. would that would be nice too. As yeah. a matter of, as a matter of fact, uh, it, if you regularly watch our Sunday services uh, over the internet, uh, and you watch the podcast, and if and if you feel this is something worthwhile in your life, then I would encourage you to contribute uh, to it. And the reason I would do that is that you know every everything takes uh, material resources these days. And, uh, and ours is no different. So uh, we would appreciate uh, any gifts or tithes uh, that you choose to send and just know that they're going to a worthwhile cause. So thanks for your support. And, and also we have a, um, you have something coming up November 2nd. Second, yeah, I you think. want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, what, what we're in the process of doing is is forming uh, prayer groups, um, s- support groups for, for people who can get together during the week on their own time and and uh, support each other in prayer. Well, before we can do that, uh, before we just head headlong into that, um, I'm going to have a couple of classes on prayer, and we're going to have those on Wednesday evenings. Uh, I believe it's at six thirty, and. Uh, if you if you get our newsletter or tune into our uh, Unity of Chattanooga website, you can see all the details. But we're going to be having prayer classes, and the idea is, how do we pray for others? Um, how does that work? Uh, how do we have our own uh, prayer practice? Um, the uh, in the Gospel of James, he says, uh, "You do not uh, manifest. You not do not." Get, uh, get good results because you pray amiss. Mm. Well, what was he talking about? Right, right. And right. we're talking about affirmative prayer, which is completely different. Well, and you know, you're going to tell us a little bit about that, what that is. On, exactly. On we're going to expl- yeah. explain what affirmative prayer is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to show uh, how you can understand and, and see the results of that. This is deep that. stuff. This is deep stuff. This oh, is yeah. metaphysical stuff. This is not your normal prayer stuff. And I have to put it out there like that because like you said, Doug, you, you know, I've been doing this stuff since I'm four years old. So you kind of, it's normal to you. But I make a big deal out of it because I, I know how, how different it is. And I'm still, you know, just touching the edge of this stuff. And, and so I want my viewers to understand that this is not just a normal prayer class. This is an affirmative prayer well, this, um, class. And it's, it's about learning how to pray. And it's not the way you've been praying. Most of you guys have been praying your entire life. 
you know, where we picture this thing in the sky and we imagine it being distant from us. I mean, you taught me how to do affirmative prayer. And when you taught it to me, it, it was works, like, oh, my it? God, I can't believe I've been doing it that way. And I've got results quickly. So I encourage you guys, if you're if you're online, you watch this online, come out to this, this, this affirmative uh, prayer class on November 2nd at 630. You can um, send, it, send us an email at contact at unityofchattanooga.org. And again, that's contact at unityofchattanooga.org. And we'll send you a link. It's, it's not, it's not, it's a it doesn't cost anything to join this, no. this class. And, no, it's, it's and Doug's going to give a, 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 a We'll class. keep it to an hour. Yeah. Okay. And the, the whole idea is, uh, you know, how do, how do you connect with, uh, with spirit and with the... Who with who you are, you know, on the inside. How do you how do you make that connection? And and the whole idea is once you can make that connection, once you can get all those energy systems uh, aligned and going in the same direction, uh, you'll be amazed at how. And this is not, you know, somebody's going to say, oh, this is witchcraft or oh, this is something. No, it's not. Uh, we'll make a distinction because it's all how you focus uh, with it. Again. What's the highest and the best for you and, and everybody else? And it's called affirmative prayer. And by the way, uh, if you're interested in that, uh, a little preliminary, uh, go to uh, Silent Unity and, and make a call there. Uh, it's Unity's 24-hour prayer ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find it online, uh, www.unity.org. You'll, yeah. you'll see something. Yeah, okay. silent, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it, but it's Silent Unity. Mm -hmm. it, it's a free call, and um, it'll be three minutes, something like that, and you will get an experience of what affirmative prayer can be. And I can, I can tell our viewers, I have called them uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. You know, when I've got a, a knot in my tail about something and I can't quite, you know, get it right going for me, I will call Silent Unity and uh, it, it's just a beautiful experience. Yeah, so. I have that up right now for our viewers to take a look at. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, that's a way to, to kind of connect to see how see what they're going to experience when they come to the class. That's right. And so I put that resource up for them. They can take a look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. And, and even in the class, one of the things that I'm going to... Uh, that I'm going to uh, talk about is, as part of the class, mm -hmm. call Silent Unity with a prayer request so that you can see how this is done. Wow. Not just from me. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't let me be the only source. Right. All right. Call Silent call Unity. Call it Silent mm -hmm. Unity and, and here's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. you're, going to, you're going to get a voice on the other end and that voice is going to say, Silent Unity, how may we pray with you? And the way that you open up is you say, uh, you know, my name is whatever, and uh, I've got this situation going on in my life. Try to, you know, keep it condensed. We don't need your whole story, right. all right? We just need uh, how can we pray with you? And then listen to the prayer and listen to the steps that they go through. Um, and it, it'll, for most people, it just opens them up like a can opener and says, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I, I can actually feel, mm -hmm. you know, something going mm -hmm. on. So I, I would recommend that. Yeah. And that, and again, that's the silent unit. We put that number up and then we just want to remind our viewers that we have a class, November 2nd, 6.30. Contact at unitchattanooga.org to get more information about that. We'll send you a link. You can come join us. Doug will be there. Um, also, we have our spiritual connection group that meets every Thursday right. um, at the uh, on, at the Whole Foods on Manufacturers right. Road. That's been going really, really well. Yeah, we we have bunches of people, uh, you know, every uh, every Thursday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, by bunches, I mean you know five, six, yeah. seven, mm -hmm. some sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's really no agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, we we just sit there. Most of us will bring something to eat, yeah. or we'll get it there. Yeah. Um, and since the space is free, I would encourage you to go Whole Foods, buy, buy something, something. Yeah. buy something yeah. to help, you know, support uh, that. Mm -hmm. And then we, we sit around and uh, and we just talk about whatever comes up. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's a little heavier conversation. Sometimes we're just laughing like crazy. And, and it's just a chance to get be around other people. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. That's right. And we've had people that, that, that's been in town. And they just, they watch our podcast, they, they, they've watched our service online, they know that we're going to be there on Thursday, they just show up, and they say, hey, how you doing? And it's like, you know, I don't want to call them our fans, but they're people that have watched us, and, That's right. and it's amazing that this word gets out, and people watch, and they yeah. come and say hello, so, yeah. yeah. And, and one of the things, you know... I mean, you even had a friend that, that said, hey, I'm, I'm, I've been watching you, Doug, you're like, you've been watching me? <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it, you know, and the the other thing, the other thing, um, you and I were talking about this before the podcast. Um, our facility right now, uh, the Red Bank Community Center, uh, very very, we appreciate it. Mm-hmm. It's it's it, it serves our, mm-hmm. uh, our what we have very well. Mm-hmm. Um, all those good things, but we only rent it for three hours yeah. from 10 to one. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of a, a, a rush to set up when we get mm-hmm. there. And then, you know, once the service is over, it's kind of a rush to take it. And we don't have an awful lot of time to sit around and talk. Mm-hmm. Well, Thursday nights mm-hmm. is that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can sit around and we can just be who we are mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, and talk. Or, or yeah, and somebody could say, "Hey, you know, I wanted to ask you about this." Yeah, that's that's uh, the time. It's the time to talk to the minister. If you oh. need to talk to the minister. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So ho- hopefully, maybe we can extend that Sunday time yeah. a little bit. So because yeah. because I um, I really don't have an awful lot of time. Once that service is over, we've got to we break gotta, it down. We gotta break down. Yeah, we, we've. You know, and, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I don't have an awful lot of time. People do come up. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to turn anybody away. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to engage. Mm-hmm. Um, but and, that, and, and, but that'd know, be... and, and, and just to cut into that a little bit, you know, we are in the process of looking for space. We've raised a lot. Of, we've raised some funds without congregation. Yes, we, we have. We, we, so we been have, very generous. We've been very generous, and so we have um, some funds that we can. We're looking to put in in the right use. So if there's right. any space that anyone you guys know about that's in Chattanooga, Tennessee, you think we should look at it, let us know. You know, yeah. send us an email, contact at unionchattanooga.org. That's always it's always that email address if you have anything yeah. that you think we should look at that'll benefit us. Because we do we could use the space. And we're it's coming. We know it's coming. It's, it's just, just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. yeah. Um and also we have our dancing with uh, prayers on Sunday. Yeah, Laura and does a wonderful job. Wonderful right. job. And so if you get there, October starts at 11, but if you get there at 1030, you get to experience that. Right. And that's an opening up period. You know, if you, if you get involved in that, you're going to just definitely drop into the service. Oh, yeah. Open up to the service. So yeah. Just want people to know what's going on yeah. before we end. Doug. Oh, thanks. Love you, bro. Okay. Thank you, buddy. All right. All right. Talk to you later. All right.